Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in the last session, uh, we have derived uh, the conditions for money market, uh, where we have shown that uh, when money demand is equal to exogenously determined money supply, uh, money market is in equilibrium. And accordingly, uh, we have derived uh, the LM schedule, uh, where the LM schedule slopes from left to right, slope upward. Uh, on the vertical axis, uh, we have uh, measured the rate of interest and on the uh, x axis that is the horizontal axis uh, we have measured uh, the level of income. So then in the previous class we had discussed that uh, when the income increases the rate of interest also must increase so that uh, money demand will be equal to money supply. So in this session uh, we will be discussing two key uh, aspects, two important questions, one about the slope of the uh, LM schedule, uh, another is the position of the LM schedule. So we will be answering the following two questions, one is what determines the value of the slope of the LM schedule and second one subsequently uh, we will be answering what factors shift the schedule from left to right or right to left. Coming to the money market LM schedule, we have seen that the LM schedule slopes upward to the right, right. That means uh, at the higher levels of income, uh, equilibrium in the money market occurs only at higher interest rates. Uh, we have seen that the derivation that means uh, money market equilibrium means money supply is equal to money demand. And money demand we have seen that uh, one is uh, C1Y that is the uh, income induced, the parameter C1 uh, denotes the uh, income induced component of money demand uh, that is uh, part of income induced component of money demand and C2 that is positively related to the income, higher the income, uh, higher will be the demand for money. Uh, the parameter C2, it denotes the uh, interest elasticity part of money demand, that means higher the rate of interest. Uh, lower will be the money demand because of the opportunity cost uh, in involved with the uh, rate of interest. That means higher the rate of interest means higher the opportunity cost of uh, holding money or demanding money. So that is uh, negatively related. So at equilibrium point we can see that uh, MS is will be equal to uh, MD. So rewriting this one you already know that uh, MS is equal to MD. So let us take the MD means this one C0 plus C1 Y and C2 uh, R. So rewriting uh, money supply M0 S uh, is equal to C0 uh, plus C1 Y minus C2 R. And this relationship is now very clear to you I hope. Now solving for R the rate of interest uh, because we are looking for the slope of the LM curve. That means on the LM curve we have drawn that uh, rate of interest on the vertical axis uh, Y axis and uh, income on the y is on the x axis right so we know that uh, we have drawn an ln curve like that it slopes upward from left to right so if you want to know the slope uh, slope means slope of this di diagram this curve is uh, del r divided by uh, del y that is the slope so we need to solve it for solving it for y uh, you will get it uh, r is equal to uh, C0 C2 divided by MS uh, M0 S divided by C2 plus uh, C1 Y uh, divided by C2. Uh, so in this uh, it's already clear to you uh, C1 means uh, that is the income uh, induced income induced change in money demand income induced uh, change in money demand and C2 is uh, C2 is the this one the interest elasticity of money demand. Right. So, a priori uh, based on the a priori assumption we know that uh, C1 has a positive sign, parameter C1 has a positive sign, a parameter C2 has a negative sign. Let us now see what are the factors that determine the, 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 the slope of the LM schedule. The slope of the LM schedule is the del R uh, that is the movement of the uh, vertical axis in the LM graph per unit del y that is movement along the uh, horizontal axis holding constant uh, the factors that fix the position of the uh, schedule. 
So actually we are looking for uh, this one that the slope of this curve that means uh, um, is uh, upwards uh, upward uh, slope we have and then further what actually determine this slope or uh, it can be this kind of slope or it can be like this or it can be uh, like this so the slope actually it can be more flat uh, it can be more steeper uh, it can be unitary elastic like that so what determines the slope of this lm schedule so this is lm lm 1 uh, lm 2 like that so what determine the slope of this uh, lm curve that is what we are going to look now from an equation uh, is clear to you that that the r r is equal to this e, e, factors uh, c c naught divided by c2 my minus m naught s divided by c2 plus c1 y uh, divided by c2 so from this uh, we can see that this part c naught uh, c2 minus m naught s did by C2 is the uh, intercept, uh, this is the fixed position. Uh, the slope of this curve, slope of this curve is uh, determined by the second component that is this one, uh, that means C1 divided by Y uh, R, C1 Y divided by C2 uh, that determine the slope because here Y that is the income and here R. So, the slope of this curve that is uh, del R divided by del Y. Uh, is determined by is equal to this one uh, this determined by c1 y c1 divided by c2 so solving for this uh, when you can see that actually uh, solving it for uh, del r the computing the slope as uh, del r divided by del y for fixed values uh, of c naught c2 and minus m naught s divided by c2 gives uh, del r uh, is equal to uh, C1 uh, divided by C2 uh, times uh, del Y. This is the slope of then is the slope of the LN curve is that means uh, slope is the we already mentioned that is del R divided by del Y is the slope uh, that denoted by that can be slope can be measured as uh, C1 divided by C2. So, slope of this LN curve that is slope means the del R divided by del Y uh, is equal to C1 divided by C2. So, C1 we have already seen that the income the parameter C1 means the income induced uh, money demand and C2 is the interest uh, elasticity or interest rate induced interest rate induced uh, money demand. So, income induced money demand, uh, interest rate induced money demand. So, the slope of LN curve is nothing but the parameters of uh, income induced uh, money demand divided by interest rate uh, induced uh, money demand that is the slope of the uh, LN curve. This is the slope of the LN curve. Now, factors that determine what determine the slope of the LM schedule is already you got an idea that means one is C1 and other one uh, is C2. So, let us discuss this in detail. So, that the LM schedule is upward sloping, but is it steep or relatively flat? So, we can draw an LM schedule for example, like this that is uh, this is more steep uh, or this can be more flat. Uh, like that right so we can draw like this lm1 is like that more steep or lm2 is more flat so the question here is uh, we know that is already upward sloping uh, then the question is is it steep or relatively flat so here the slope of the lm is important for policy effects as well and the slope of the lm schedule is we will discuss this one how is important for policy effects in the subsequent sessions we will discuss uh, why the slope of the LM is important for macroeconomic policy effects. So, there are two factors uh, that determine the slope of the LM schedule. Uh, one is the income induced change in money demand that is one is C1 and second one is interest elasticity of money demand. So, let us discuss uh, both in detail. Assuming that income induced increase in money demand, assuming higher value and lower value, uh, low value for uh, income induced uh, that is the assuming high value for C1 or low value for C1. Uh, let us see how does LM curve remain uh, looks like, what will be the slope of uh, LM curve. So, assuming that higher the value of C1, uh, we can see that uh, steeper will be the LM schedule. 
so that means higher the value of c1 larger the increase in money demand per unit increase in income and uh, hence the larger the upward adjustment in the interest rate uh, required to restore total money demand to the level of the fixed money supply so what we have seen in the previous session that uh, when uh, income increases that means the GDP increases in order to ensure uh, in order to restore uh, money market equilibrium because the money supply is already given that is at a fixed money supply uh, we have seen that in order to uh, restore money money demand is equal to money supply that is the equilibrium the interest rate has to increase right. So, the interest rate has to increase that is why we are getting an upward sloping LN curve. So, suppose when we are having a high value of C1 that means higher value of C1 that the income induced demand for uh, money demand is high that means larger the increase in money demand uh, per unit increase in income or oh, that means a small increase in uh, income uh, actually leads to high demand for money then you can see that a larger upward adjustment in interest rate is required to restore uh, total uh, money supply that means for a given amount of increase in income uh, there is a the proportionate increase uh, in money money demand is larger so that to ensure because we said that the essential condition here is that uh, interest rate has to be raised has to be increased so that uh, then only uh, money demand will be equal to money supply. So, here uh, the thing is that accordingly uh, we can say that a, a larger C1 require a larger upward adjustment in the interest rate uh, to restore total money demand to the level of uh, fixed money supply. Uh, so, the value of C1 is not a subject of much debate actually the controversy on this subject uh, senders, uh, subject senders on C2 that determine the slope of the uh, LM schedule. Another thing for a given increase in income induced increase in money demand that means for a given C1 uh, the amount by which interest rate has to rise to restore total money demand to the value of the fixed money supply also depends on how elastic. Uh, money supply sorry money demand how elastic or how sensitive uh, is the money demand is with respect to changes in the rate of interest that means that we are now talking about uh, C2 right. So, for a given income induced increase in money demand the amount by which the interest rate has to rise to restore uh, total money demand to the value of the fixed money supply depends on how elastic or sensitive the money demand uh, is with the respect to the changes in the rate of interest. So, minus C2 R uh, is equal to del MD by del R. Now, the relationship uh, between the interest elasticity of money demand and the slope of uh, LN curve let us discuss uh, by considering two cases one is low interest elasticity we assume that the parameter C2 uh, is small. So, what does it mean the parameter C2 is small means uh, look at this di uh, diagram the figure this figure the, the, the first one initially look at for example, the first diagram that is MD. Uh, MD uh, when the income level is uh, Y naught when the income level is Y naught uh, this is the money demand curve right this is the money demand curve uh, when the income is Y naught. Uh, suppose uh, there is increase in income what if income increases from uh, Y naught to income increases to from Y naught to Y 1 uh, when income increases from Y naught to Y 1 we, we have seen in the previous sessions that the curve the money demand curve will be shifting rightwards and the slope of this uh, money demand curve uh, you look at this one this actually we have seen that uh, low interest elasticity low interest elasticity means is more steeper uh, that means when income increases uh, as a result because the interest elasticity is very small uh, when the interest elasticity is small uh, that means uh, the increase in money demand um, the, the, the adjustment in money demand uh, in order to restore the equilibrium in the money market actually uh, require a large increase in uh, rate of interest because the responsive the sensitivity of the interest uh, uh, the demand for money with respect to interest rate is very low. So, what we can see here is that uh, when income increases from Y naught to Y 1 uh, you can see that 
uh, obviously we know that in the LM schedule uh, the rate of interest must increase. But here the sensitivity because how what we are seeing the economic induction the logic behind why rate of interest increase uh, will ensure that money demand is equal to money supply is equal to because the money supply is already fixed. Uh, the induction here is uh, we have seen in the previous sessions that uh, when uh, rate of interest increase the opportunity cost of holding uh, money or money opportunity cost of demanding money uh, decreases that means people demanding uh, money for transaction purpose decrease actually high rate of interest discourages uh, the transaction demand for money so that the money demand will be equal actually when income increases they need more money but uh, since the money supply is already fixed uh, we can see that uh, the high rate of interest discourage uh, the uh, discourage people in demanding uh, more money in proportion to increase income so that it discourage them and so that they will be uh, demanding money uh, the, at the initial level so that money demand is equal to money supply. But here what we can see that uh, we know that uh, increase in rate of interest is essential to discourage them uh, in the uh, money demand increased money demand. So, but when the rate of interest the sensitivity to uh, the money demand sensitivity to rate of interest is very low that means a small change in income obviously they need more money money demand will be more but since the uh, interest rate sensitivity of uh, money demand is very small actually we need a large increase in rate of interest so that the opportunity cost is so high so that it will be discourage them uh, it will uh, discourage people in demanding money because of the very high uh, opportunity cost so that there will be the equilibrium can be restored at the initial position. So, the simply simple point here is that uh, since the interest elasticity is very small due to increase in income we need uh, the, the money demand will increase but uh, a large change in rate of interest is actually required to ensure that uh, money demand uh, is restored to the initial equilibrium position. So, changes in money market equilibrium at progressively uh, higher income you can see the curve will be shifting rightwards. So, similarly the we can see that rate of interest also increases uh, what we can see that this increase in y raise the transaction demand for money by uh, this one uh, the c1 times y0 y uh, minus uh, y0 um, here c1 times y2 minus uh, y1 uh, that distance. Uh, so, you can see this the increase in money demand, but because the given increase in the interest rate will not reduce money demand by much because C2 is small uh, the interest rate will have to rise by a large amount to reduce money demand back to the uh, fixed uh, money supply level. This is the case when the interest elasticity that is C2 parameter C2 is very small. Let us now take uh, another case that means the contrasting case where high interest elasticity that means C2 is high. So, here uh, what we can see here is that again the same example we can repeat here uh, that means uh, income increases from y0 to y1, y1 to y2 and you know that um, since the money supply is fixed uh, anyway when income increases money demand also increases. Uh, but in order since the uh, elasticity the elasticity is very high uh, that means a small change small increase in rate of interest. Uh, is sufficient to reduce uh, the money demand that means the interest elasticity is very high. That means uh, here uh, you can see that when income increases from uh, y0 to y, y0 to y1 and y1 to y2 uh, we know that uh, demand for money increases, but this increase in y raise the transaction demand for money, but the interest rate must rise by a relatively small amount to restore uh, equilibrium in the money market because that opportunity cost idea uh, uh, works well here because the interest elasticity is very high uh, when income increases obviously people demand more money but uh, since the elasticity is very high uh, a small rise in uh, rate of interest is sufficient uh, to restore uh, equilibrium in the money demand money market that means uh, to reduce uh, money demand because uh, we as we mentioned uh, I said many times that means money supply is already fixed. Uh, so, the money demand should be equal to that fixed money supply. So, here when 
so elasticity is very high. Um, what we need is actually uh, the high rate of interest discourages uh, reduce money demand, then finally uh, equilibrium will be restored. So, since the rate of that elasticity is very high, a small uh, rise in rate of interest is sufficient to uh, restore uh, uh, money market equilibrium, that is, money demand uh, equal to money supply. So, the relative values of C1 and C2 that means the slope of LM we have seen del R that is del Y is equal to C1 by C2. So, if the expression for the slope of the LM schedule C1 C2 is large then the schedule will be steep. So, this means that more money demand increases per unit increase in income that means higher C1 and the less sensitive uh, money demand is to interest rate that means the lower value of C2 the steeper will be the LM schedule. So, in contrast uh, if the expression for the slope of the uh, schedule is small uh, then the schedule will be flat right. So, that means the expression for the slope of the uh, schedule is small then the schedule will be uh, flat. So, let us now examine uh, two extreme cases uh, two extreme cases of this slope. So, in the previous session uh, we have taken the slope one is steeper and another is flat one is we can call that steeper means uh, inelastic uh, the flat means uh, elastic, but we are going to make it more steep uh, take the more extreme case that means steep means uh, more steep that means let us make it vertical. So, let us make it uh, vertical. Uh, other one is elastic, I uh, increase the elasticity further and make it perfectly elastic that means flat it become more and more flat means it become horizontal fully uh, horizontal. So, the let us case these two extreme cases of this slope uh, in the first case what if C2 is 0 that means interest elasticity uh, is 0 that means the money demand uh, is completely insensitive to uh, rate of interest. So, in this case uh, we can see that MD then in that case money demand is going to be uh, is a function of C0 plus C1y because we already assume that uh, C2 uh, is equal to 0 that means uh, that is not part of the function anymore. So, in that way money supply that the money demand replacing money demand is equal to C0 plus C1y we can rewrite the equation as M0 yes money supply is equal to uh, C0 plus C1y. So, consequently with the money supply fixed at for equilibrium uh, we must have y is equal to uh, M0 yes minus C0 uh, divided by C1. So, what we can see here is that only one level of income can be the equilibrium level of level for the money market equilibrium. The one particular level, one level of income uh, can be the an equilibrium level of uh, money market equilibrium here. So, when C0, C2 is 0, so we can see that uh, it is a kind of a classical case uh, because Keynesian money demand function. Uh, not differ substantively from the classical money demand function because as in the classical economic theory uh, money demand solely depends uh, that means money depend money demand depends uh, only on income the classical economist uh, they did not consider uh, money demand as a function of uh, money demand as a function of rate of interest because for, for them money demand is uh, depends only on income. So, the distinguishing feature of the Keynesian theory of money demand is that a negative relationship between money demand and interest rate. So, according to Keynes um, money demand is a is negatively related to rate of interest and positively related to uh, income. So, in this case the LM schedule uh, would look like this that means uh, there is only one level of income that is this one this is the Y naught uh, income that Y naught the level of income is equal to uh, money supply minus that is Z naught, Z naught uh, divided by C1. So, in this case we can see that LM schedule is vertical if money demand is completely uh, interest insensitive that means uh, C2 is equal to uh, 0. Uh, let us now look at the alternative case. The alternative case occurs uh, when the interest elasticity of money demand become extremely large approaching infinity. So, what caused this? 
so that means um, extreme c2 is extremely large uh, that means approaching infinity so our question what causes this what we can see here is that especially this point we have seen that the c2 is very high uh, especially when uh, the moment we discuss a uh, liquidity trap uh, when we discuss the concept called liquidity trap especially when we discuss the speculative demand for money uh, where uh, we are seeing that the interest rate becomes very low uh, relative to what is considered normal particularly a consensus develop considering future interest rate increases as likely. So, the Keynesian theory uh, of speculative demand for money because based on the uh, expected increase in interest rate and the expected future capital losses we, that we have seen earlier that means the expected future capital losses outweighing the small interest earnings on bonds the public would hold any increase in money balance uh, with only a negligible fall in the interest rate. So, in this range of money demand schedule the interest elasticity of money demand uh, becomes extremely uh, high uh, becomes extremely high here. So, when we draw the LM, demand, LM curve using a high interest rate elasticity that means perfectly, uh, perfectly interest elastic uh, we can see that it, it, the LM curve look like uh, a liquidity trap. So, Keynes termed this is a liquidity trap the here you can see that the low level of income uh, the money demand curve becomes uh, perfectly elastic this point you can see that is very flat. So, converting this one into a schedule converting this one uh, seeing that actually uh, high level of income because here uh, you can see a level of income is y naught uh, here money demand when the level of income is y 1 very low level of income. So, at the very low level of income at this low income levels with the money supply at the m naught s the equilibrium interest rate is also so low that we are on the flat portion of the uh, money demand schedule. So, within this range uh, a rise in income that is from y naught to y 1 from y naught to y 1 we can write here y naught to y 1. Uh, y naught to y 1 we can see here that a small rise in income from y 1 y naught to y 1 uh, requires only a slight rise in rate of interest. So, you look at here so from r naught to r 1 for the money market equilibrium only a slight rise in interest rate is required to restore equilibrium in the money market. So, that money demand is highly responsive to changes in the interest rate. So, here uh, here in this place here in this distance we can see that um, the LM schedule is nearly flat LM schedule is uh, nearly horizontal. So, at the same time look at uh, higher level of income from Y2 to Y1. So, that means when we are talking about Y0 to Y1 we are talking lower level of income that means uh, economy is at a recessionary stage. Now, look at y no, Y2 to Y1 uh, at this point at the higher levels of income uh, Y2 to Y3 that is a normal period uh, uh, increase in income would require a large increase in the interest rate to restore uh, equilibrium in the money market. So, here uh, the equilibrium interest rates are such that we are not in the liquidity trap here. If we further uh, present this one. Uh, the liquidity trap uh, it would look like this uh, this is what we have seen in the previous sessions the money demand that um, uh, here after certain point of time uh, then after that the money demand become perfectly elastic then converting this one into uh, a curve uh, drawing it using a curve we can see that the low level of income that means here um, when it becomes uh, perfectly elastic in the money demand that part when we convert this one to LM curve that means the y on the x axis and rate of interest on the y axis uh, LM curve would look like this. So, during recessionary time uh, according to Keynes, Keynesian economics um, the LM curve is going to be uh, perfectly elastic this horizontal slope and afterwards uh, it becomes uh, sloping upwards. So, during uh, this um, later on we are going to see that uh, when the liquidity trap when the economy is at a uh, liquidity trap uh, increase in money supply is not going to make uh, any impact in the economy. So, the kind of putting more formally monetary policy is not going to make uh, any impact. Let me stop here uh, in the next session uh, let us discuss what are the factors that shift uh, the LM schedule. Thank you and see you in the next session.